So we're going to talk about teachers as leaders for one thing, and creating change, change agents, agents of change. I'm sure you've all heard those terms before. Um, support, motivation, goal, success, contribution, teamwork, all parts of leadership. I'm going to let you guys read this stuff on your own time, because that's 29, 28, 27. Okay, so we're, we're, we're a few, few of food. We're moving on. <laughs> so, this slide has a lot of stuff on it. And really, technology is using, using educators, one who makes informed choices. So, really looking at stuff, doing your research, looking at best ways to do things, easiest ways to do things. Um, I was having a discussion with another professor about this stuff because we were discussing the final project and she's doing one her way and I'm doing one my way. But we were talking about different applications and stuff and how you know our students need to look at these things because it's like going to the corner store to get a half a gallon of milk versus going to Miami to get a half a gallon of milk. I mean, you could save a lot of time if you just do some simple research and look. Okay. But the bottom line of this first bullet point is uses technology to improve learning, not for the sake of using technology. So you know, we don't use technology for technology's sake. We use it to enhance what we're doing in the classroom. I've said that before through several of these lectures. And it's, you know, if, how many saw the movie Bad Teacher? Okay. <laughs> For those of you that haven't seen it, it's about a, a woman who's engaged to a really rich guy, but she, the mother-in-law, I think, wants her to keep teaching or doing something, so she, she goes in, but the first two weeks of school, she comes in, she's always hung over, and she just puts on a video for the students, and that's, that's her class, okay? But then her, uh, her relationship breaks up, and she needs money, and then she finds out if she does get a certain uh, level of excellence in her class, she's going to get money, so that she starts teaching and not using. And the kids are like, wait, what? where's the movies? Where's I use the movies? You know, so we don't use technology for technology's sake. In fact, most of your lesson plans won't have any technology in them. Okay. Um, my little niece was over Sunday, and she was doing math, and they were making her write it out. You know, and she's at Uncle, Uncle, what's, what? you know, I, I haven't done math in so long. I'm, I'm over in the corner going, hey, Siri, you know. Because <laughs> I can't, you know, I'm getting the answers for her. Oh, shut up. I, my Siri went off, so. Then, then she discovered that she could get Siri on my watch. She'd go, hey, Siri, and she's doing all kinds of, you know, we, we're having a lot of fun, but. Bottom line is, you know, technology is not used in a lot of stuff, okay? A good technology-using educator explores technology and encourages students to be creators and critics of technology, not just consumers. So it's really looking at the different types of technologies that are out there and doing some research. And this is going to go towards your group project, okay? You're going to do some research. On, what, on these things. And that promotes change. Just like technology, not change for change's sake, not technology for technology's sake, but to increase a student's learning potential. So there's a lot of change that we can do out there. I've said this since day one. You know, they all know how to do this. They all know about this. But how do we use it to teach? Okay, How do we use it? as a teaching tool. It's not an easy thing to do. Okay, and there's inclusion and infusion. So how do we include technology into the classrooms? Because we have traditional purposes and we have transferring information and practicing skills. So, you know, if we're teaching traditional math where they can't use calculators, they can't do anything, they've got to write it all down. You know, 
once they get to a certain point and then they need help, then we might be able to include technology in there and do some remedial stuff. But same, it, it shouldn't be central to daily activities. And then the day-to-day -day educational process, when it's infused, we can do that. And this is a telling little graphic here. Redefinition. Tech allows for creation of new tasks previously, previously inconceivable. Okay. You guys are so tech, that's the word I'm looking for, saturated. <laughs> okay. In your lives, you know, I don't think any, anybody in here over 25. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, 25 years ago, we didn't have any of this stuff. And I was still... I was year, I was 25, 26 in that general vicinity, you know, and we didn't have any of this stuff, nothing, so nothing, weird. huh? I said that's so weird. What a time. Yeah, we had black and white TV with three channels. Oh. That was it. <laughs> I know. Can you imagine? No. Yeah. We actually had we had a rotary phone that you had to pick up and dial. What? Off top. No, no, no. I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> That's called putting in real-world context. There you go. Okay. All right. So that's what a good teacher does. So, you know, we had, like, when we're talking about technology and math, we had, like, very basic calculators, maybe. Yeah, that's true. You know, and now they've got the t Tandy TS 5027s. That do, I mean, you can, you know program a, a spaceship with these things. You know, we didn't have that stuff back then. Modification, tech allows for significant task redesign. So, you know, if you're going to do something, like you remember that coding thing I did, you know, teaching the coding, you have them go to these places and do things, and you're going to do that with your app project. You know, you're going to look at these things, how you might redesign a class. So that's transformation of technology and then enhancement to enhance, aug to augment. Tech Act is a direct tool substitute with functional improvement. Is it going to help what we're doing? Or is it just a novelty that we're trying to use to get the kids excited? You know, because we talk about, we'll talk about that in a minute, the rewards and punishment. Substitution, Tech Act is a direct tool substitute with no functional change. So, I mean, we're just switching one for the other as far as uh, some type, type of contact with each of the children versus traditional versus techie. Entry or substitution, teachers begin to learn about new technologies while gaining skills. Because believe it or not, where I was 25 years ago, you're going to be soon. Okay, You're going to say, well, I didn't have this stuff back when I was in my 20s. And Lord knows what, what we're going to have. You know? You can, can only imagine what we're going to have, the things that are going to be out there. Uh, at uh, adoption, teachers begin to use technology without significant changes to the teaching practices. So you're kind of just inching it in bit by bit. And sometimes you won't use it at all. Modification, redefinition. Teachers are more confident in their use of technology and incorporated into their teaching. And then teachers constantly explore new ways to, to use technology creatively in and out of the classroom. And that can include like flipped classroom stuff that we've talked about, um, all these types of things. But the bottom line is, you know, there's just so much stuff out there for you as a teacher to look at and to evaluate what's best. You know, I was looking at this WebQuest deal that I was going to do, and you know, there's like seven or eight WebQuest authoring tools that you can go to. And I have to go and look at the best one that's going to, and I just, you know, I'm not even going to mess with it. Because it's just like what, taking way too much time to do this, you know. And same with the app, de developing an app, that's, that's a little bit easier. And then the same with digital badging. You know, there's just all these authoring sites that, that do this stuff, but I have, I, I have to evaluate them. And I have to make sure that, that you're going to be able to do them without too much. I mean, you're going to be able to do any one of them, but you know, I 
kind of want to get one that's easy yet rigorous. If you follow what I'm saying, you know, I don't want it to be too easy, but I don't want it to be too hard. And I want to get the bang for my buck, you know. So we look at all these things. So fully integrated digital tools help students. Yes, we can do that. And, you know, this is true, you know. These kids, much like you guys right now, cannot wait till this is over so you can get on this. Is that right? You'd be lying. Say, so, as soon as I'm done, it's going to come up. Okay. So, students have these cell phones in their head. I asked my students yesterday, how old were you or what grade were you in when you were allowed to get a cell phone, have a cell phone? I shared one with my dad in fifth grade. Okay. Yeah, fourth fine. grade. Fourth grade? Mm -hmm. I didn't get one to talk about my own. Uh -huh. <laughs> I didn't get one to talk about my own. Okay, so you could actually buy your own? Yeah. So you got a job and had to earn it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, we have, we have a myriad of different times and, and circumstances of when we get these things, you know. So... Um, but believe me, the, the, the seventh grader I have, man, he's just dying to get a phone. The, the eleventh grader, she's in high school, you know, she just is sh shaking because she doesn't have a phone. You know, and all her friends do, you know. And she, you know, it's really hard for her. Does she have like, an iPad or something? No. Mm -hmm. they, have, they have laptops at the house. Mm-hmm. But no, she wants a phone, you know, because she wants to listen to her music and do all that, and like the other girls do, and text and all the other stuff that they do. You know, and she's missing out on, and it's it. She is, because it's a social thing. I mean, it's it's a social thing. Ninety percent. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Teaching style and administrative supports is harder for teachers with teacher-centered approaches to some side to allow students more control. So that's kind of what I'm saying. It's hard for teachers to really let students do this stuff. It's hard. It would be hard for me to say, okay, everybody got your phone, do what you want to do while I'm talking. You know, because you're not paying attention. You're missing stuff. It's a diversion. I know you think you can multitask, but, you know. All you're hearing from me, you're focused on your phone and you're just hearing noise. That's all you're hearing. And you're so used to that. You are so used, and so am I. You know, we hear that, we hear, it's just background noise you hear, you know. And so, uh, we, we can't allow students to have a whole lot of control. But integration requires ongoing training and support from administrators and that always doesn't happen. Because technology costs money. And we'll talk more about that. Unwillingness to change to favorite lesson plans to include technology. Well, we've talked about paradigm paralysis in the past. We've talked about paradigm shifts in the past. We've talked about some of the older generation of teachers don't want to mess with this stuff. And they have every right not to. You know, what's working for them for the past 30 years is going to work for the next... 30 years. You know, they haven't used tech, technology at all in that, and they don't want it. But some of them don't know what they're missing. They don't know how easy it is to do stuff, with, with especially administrative stuff. Okay. And many lack the time to do it. Because it takes time. Uh, we have reluctance to use technology in new lesson plans. And it says here, you know, organize the lesson plans is a challenge on its own. And it is. Because you need to do everything first, and then if you can use technology to enhance the lesson, that's great. But you've got to do everything else first. You've got to get your standards together. You've got to get your objectives together. You've got to get, you know, your goals and all that other stuff done first. The content, how you're going to do the lesson, all that stuff. And then if you can put in technology, that's great. Um, so this is kind of what this class is about, is learning and integrating new technology and resources to help. So I've, I'm giving you the exercise of 
finding things like the websites that your kids are going to look at, YouTube's you might, might want them to do, apps you might want them to look at, everything in that realm of technology, you know, you can, you, you've got that down. You're still going to be learning throughout your matriculation, my COE students here, and I don't think I have one COE student in this room, but, <laughs> you know, as my COE students matriculate, they're going to learn how to write lesson plans faster and easier and so forth. And then you, this class shows you how to integrate the technology if you need to. Okay. Rewards and punishment. The appeal of technology as students may seem to take an, an effective behavior modification tool. So, what does that mean? The appeal of technology to students may seem to make it an effective behavior modification tool. Be, modifying what behavior, do you think? Yeah, just how do you behave? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I appreciate that. At least you did something. Like, Go ahead. Like when they do something good, you can reward them with, with something. With some else. technology. Yeah, like saying like the class had a good week. You watched like watch a movie. Or you can like get on the computer and do something yeah. or something like that. That that could be. What what are you saying? Like positive and negative reinforcement. Yeah. yeah. So we can say, okay, I. I'm going to let you use your calculators to do the math. But then they start cutting off. Well, now you can't do it. Now you can't use your calculators. You know, those, that, that would be a reward and punishment of a technology two scenario. Um, a tool, but using it su as such creates or reinforces inequalities in the learning process too. So if I'm allowing them to use technology, Instead of like go digging in deep face to face and teaching them something, mm -hmm. is it actually you know better or worse for the learning process? That's stuff you got to look at. See, so you're constantly flipping that switch. Okay, overuse of technology. I love this picture. You know, they're all gathered at the table having a nice meal, but they're all on their damn phones. <laughs> you know, and that's you know that's the way it is now. My wife and I go out to dinner, and like we have a no cell phone. If it's a date night, we have a no cell phone rule. And that's her, not me. Oh my gosh, what do you guys talk about? Yeah, really. <laughs> like. <laughs> that's exactly right. Mostly we talk about look at these people, that, that, that they're on their phones. You know, why aren't they I talking? I can imagine y'all talk about other people. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, it's, you know, we talk about stuff, but it's like, if we can't, you know, if we can't, like, go enjoy a meal together without being on our phone, you know, it's, it's a problem for us. You know, once in a while we'll get, get them out, look at pictures of us or something like that. You know? But we're not a te texting and doing all this other stuff. So, constant use of a single technology may lessen this impact and prevent the planning of other activities that offer different opportunities to learn. So if we're constantly using technology, we might be missing other avenues in which to learn that don't involve technology. So we have to look at that. Separating students by ability groups. Dividing class by perceived ability reinforces the notion of the have and have nots in the classroom. Achievement creates different learning experiences. So again, there is a digital divide out there that we'll talk about in a minute. But we can separate students by ability. What I prefer is we have, you know, we talk about high functioning, middle functioning, low functioning students. I like to group all three of them together so they can come up with a common theme together. It helps the low functioning, helps the high functioning. Don't you, if you're a high functioning student, don't you like teaching someone to do something, showing somebody, you get, some, you get a certain amount of satisfaction in doing that. I think you can all relate to what I'm talking about. Okay, so we, we try to do that. And then technology can help. Uh, the, the participation gap, too, is uh, uh, another issue. I, I've shown this graphic before. I'm not going to read all this stuff. But I showed this in an earlier lecture. I'm just going to revisit it very quickly. But, you know, 100K plus, 
95% of the people that make 100K plus have smartphones, have computers, have broadband, internet, have a tablet, versus 64, 56, 53, 32, 17. So, I mean, there is this disparity. And it's, it's real, you know. A lot of, I've told you this before, NEMS Middle School, right down here on Orange Avenue. Like 45% of the students do not have computers at home, do not have internet at home, do not have phones. Their parents don't have phones. They're trying to put food on the table, you know. And, you know, it's tough. And we look at it like, you know, uh, I'm not going to get into politics. Okay, we're going to move on. But just know that it's real. <laughs> Okay, it's real out there, and it's 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 starting to close somewhat because we're starting. Well, are you disagreeing with me? And that's fine. Can you tell me why? You don't think it's closing mm -mm. at all? I mean, no, not really. Okay, you want to tell me why? Well, I would say like here in Tallahassee, like the simple idea of like it being so segregated still keeps it like in a backward position already uh -huh. and I feel as though the, the actual care isn't there there may be like this sense of like okay we can fulfill the status quo you know so like rhetoric but yeah I don't I don't think like the actual progression you know purposeful progression is there okay I saw you uh, shaking your head would you, you gonna say something okay <laughs> there is okay so you're looking at Tallahassee, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about general overall the United States. It is somewhat lessening. Although in Tallahassee, I see all the time, uh, I saw this several times, uh, a booth set up down on Lake Bradford Drive and Kissimmee mm -hmm. of them giving away phones. Mm -hmm. And that's like the poorest, one of the poorest areas in the city, you know, or they're signing them up for cheap phones or something. And I've seen that like three or four times throughout the city in the, the sort of French town, which is another, you know, can be categorized as low income areas, you know. So they're giving free phones away. You can get all this stuff for free if you can show that you need it. You can go to Xfinity and they'll give you they'll give you internet. They pay the bill. They pay the bill. Oh. If you show you need it, they'll even give you a computer and printer. Okay, if you show you need it. Uh, and again, I talked about this. Where's that coming from? Though? How's that being paid for? <coughs> That's a tax. It's a tax in your bill if you have Xfinity. Yeah, there's a little tax in there. You, we're paying. For it. That's okay. Do you know what the these programs are called, or could I just Google like? I think you can free? Google them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let me know if I'm I'm right. I, I, yeah, I've I'm looked at these before. Yeah, because this is a good journalism project or something. Yeah. Because there's out there like you're you're supposed to be able to get free phones if you can show that to through through like Metro. Is that, is that the one? Mm -hmm. Metro PC. You know. A boost mobile or something. Yeah, because one of my wife's clients phone. got a free phone. Yeah. So I mean, check it out. I shall. And then let me know. Okay. All right. This is kind of <laughs> digital inequality reflects larger social realities. Again, there's a lot of students that don't have any access to technology at all. Don't research now. I'm not. I'm okay. looking at the problem. <laughs> Let's say more technologies in schools and homes will not solve the problem. It can actually increase the gap as advantage and disadvantage students gravitate to different experiences. So I guess you know what they're saying is if someone has a lot of technology might gravitate to these types of things with no technology, they might gravitate to these types of things. And I'm sure there's good and bad in both. Okay. To bring your own device. Thing. Um, we talked about that. There's, you know, it can be good. Um, again, when I talked to you about the DRS and their policy of cell phone use, elementary through eighth grade, absolutely no cell phone use. They will take your phone away. 
high school, you're going to have cell phone at lunch, um, but not in between classes. However, a lot of the teachers say, bring your devices and we'll do, we can do stuff with them. But then again, what, what happens when someone doesn't have a device? Like my, my niece, she doesn't have a device. And that, she said that to her mother, too, several times. You know, I need the phone. We're using it in class. I need to get a phone. What are you doing? Oh, she said, guess what? You know, I, I can't afford it. Ask your uncle. Said, Wait. <laughs> Maybe Christmas. I'll get something for her. So, you know, we'll see. So, and then there's different devices. You know, I have this giant, you know, $1,200 phone. It works really well. That's a $200 phone I'm recording it on. There's a lot of differences between the two. Obviously, iMac, or iPhone, Android, stuff like that. That's a tinker toy compared to this thing, as far as I'm concerned. I can do stuff. There's a lot more apps I can get. There's a lot more things I can do with that. But there, there may be inequalities between devices. But as you as a teacher, if you're going to do bring, bring your own device, you better look at all contingencies that students are going to have different types of phones. Okay. Uh, one, two, three time. <sighs> I'm going to let you all read this on your own. We're going to move on. Okay. We can do cooperative learning and group work. Now, this is on your lesson plan. So you need to think about this. Are you going to have them do group work or are you going to have them do individually? And you, because you need to give me a reason why. Not a long reason. Not a paragraph, not six sentences, but you do have to just ra justify your rationale of why you're doing it. This is a good slide to do. Say, I want to do think, pair, and share. Okay, we're around one, think, have students write or uh, think or write about uh, a discussion question. Around two, pair them up or quadruple them up, have group them up. Allow students to uh, turn to a partner or a group member and discuss their responses and then share. So, I mean, this is very simplistic, I, I know, but it's written down and it's a way you can express it in your lesson plan. That's why I put it there, okay? Um, and really, it's all this is saying digital tools enable students and groups to explore a wide range of topics and so forth and so on. I think creatively. Digital textbooks, hello, we've done that by um, culture. Again, top-down administrative mandates for change are not effective. You're going to get in situations, and I don't care if you're a teacher or not, you're going to get into situations where you're going to have an administrator tell you, you know, we can't do this, you, you're really pushing for something, and they're just going to say no. Sometimes they won't be nice about their no's either. You know, they're just going to say, you know, what the heck with you, you know, we're not doing this stuff, you know. So number one, you, bet, you better get some thick skin because that's going to happen. But um, teachers don't buy in, efforts lose momentum. So we as leaders, if you're going to be a leader and you're going to be part, and by the way, you don't have to be the principal of a school or a vice principal. You can be a line item faculty and you could still be a leader, okay? Just because they've got an administrative office with some name on their door, title on their door, does not mean they're any more of a leader than you are. Okay, you got to realize that. Um, so we, but we want everybody to buy into something and, and have a mindset. We'll talk about mindset in a minute. Okay. So when we do a buy-in, the change can start with teacher, students, and families, and incremental steps, and so forth and so on. But you know, schools have individual cultures. And, and that's something else you're going to find out. <laughs> you're not going to find out because you're not going to be teachers. But <laughs> teachers find out their first, you know, months there. That there is a school culture that happens, and it's going to be a lot different than what they experience in the student teaching, unless they're at the same school. But you know, Rickards up there is different from Leon, which is different from Link, uh, Lincoln, which is different from the DRS. You know, they're all different school cultures that you're in. All have different administrative styles, leadership styles, all these different th technology, you know. So to make change can be very hard, but if we do make change, 
it should start with the teachers and then filter down to the students and then filter down to the families. Mind tools, that's a different type of, uh, there's a mind tools app, there's mind tool philosophies and so forth, there's activities, and there really is, uh, this one here is talking about technologies moving from the learning to computers, about learning learning from computers to learning about computers and then finally learning with computers in multimodal environments. What's that multimodal mean? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Well, yes, multi, yes, a lot. Remember when we did learning? Oh, style? Yeah. Multimodal, different learning styles, different types of way we intelligence and all that type of stuff. So, um, automate individuals using technology to change daily life, and infomate technology funding that <coughs> redesigns and activities. So, there's different ways we can do things. WebQuest would be really pertinent here if we did do WebQuest, but we're going to do apps. Okay. Flipped. We talked about that a lot. We're going to move on and read that. It's probably going to be a question on the quiz about it, but we've talked about flipped classroom, and we did flip classroom, so I'm going to move on. Evaluation, guess what? Oh, my, whoop. I thought that was the last slide, I guess. <laughs> um, we can do a lot of stuff with evaluation, information, interaction, rotation, um, for change, um, Evaluate technology available to you. A computer can serve as an on-call librarian. Yes, websites offer countless learning activities to students. Wow. Websites can? Gee, I wonder why I made you guys do that horrid assignment. The website assignment. <laughs> you know? um, what's this called? The diagram. Yeah, up. Okay. Good. Yeah, it's, a <laughs> it's actually a triple bit. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I love the diagrams, and this is a good one, because it's how we're using technology to do our content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and I, you know, the V, okay, when we get all three going at once, so. Become a technology leader. This is almost done. I'm trying, I'm trying guys. Leadership is not just defined by one's place in a hierarchy, meaning principal, vice principal, chair of a department, supervisor, teacher, teaching assistant, sub, you know. You can have leaders at any of those levels, okay. Um, even young teachers are leaders in their classrooms. So, for my educators 